Yo, what's happening YouTube? Jamie Me here with Archie Day. Collectively we are known as Cookies vs Cream and today we are taking a look at Blue Exorcist the movie. Collector's edition signed by the uh, producer and director, you know. So, what are we talking about first? Uh, let's talk about the well, the fact that you've watched the series, haven't you? Yes. I've only watched the first episode of the series and I really enjoyed it, but I didn't actually get to watch the rest of it. So for me to watch this, it was quite, it was, you know, a whole new, I'm looking at it with fresh eyes, so it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the animation. The animation were phenomenal, honestly. I mean, this is probably some of the best animation I've seen for an anime. But the colours, especially, especially those reds and yellows, were so Eastern Asian that I thought... That's, I've never seen that in an anime before. Everything was well done. It wasn't necessarily that, you know, that's never been done before. Mm. It might have been, it's not done well often, you know, but it was, it was done really well in this. What did you think of the battles? They were so fast paced, it was so well animated. That, it, that was the thing that gripped me the most. As well as the colours and, and the story, it was the the actual fight scenes, the pace that what it went at, the fact that you didn't, you really didn't know how a battle was going to end. For me, what I think really stood out about the battles was, it was just the attention to detail, mm -hmm. little things like when, in, in a lot of anime, sometimes you feel like, I mean, they're literally trying to go down to the panel, you know, of the manga. <laughs> and maybe that kind of at times ruins the organic nature of mm -hmm. fighting in general. Little details like little things like when someone's fighting and you know things don't always go fluidly you know like you hit a building you slide down a wall it's not comfortable you know it felt for lack of a better word real at times mm -hmm. you know in a fantasy element what did you think of the storyline then the storyline was great I, I didn't know where it was going at first um when I, when I well like I said I've watched the first episode so I kind of had a gist of what was going on um I understood that there were demons and exorcists but that was it and I did feel like I was kind of just thrown in at the deep end with this one and there was so much I had to take on board and just go along with it there was no explanation of, um, of any background info it was kind of like taking a leap of faith with it with that in mind as the story went on I had to just go along with it and I, I did wonder if it would lose me in places because there was so much in there that would I would I grasp it would I lose interest but no it kept me gripped throughout all of it and I think partly because the characters are so great and um, oh is it What's the name of the of the little demon? Osamaru, I think you yeah. Oh, he was lovely, he was so cute. I think it's because I've also got a nephew, so it, you know, a little one year old nephew, so I it kind of I kind of understood that whole a little thing to play with. It was great. So I really liked that relationship and the story and I'm not gonna lie, I might have nearly cried at the end. <laughs> I, I loved the fact that it asked you a question about kind of like at times I, I I always seem to relate things to like real world issues and it's that idea of different cultures demons and humans mm. and you can't just vilify things just because of how they look and how their way of life is you have to try and transcend that and it was whether that was possible for Rin mm. and Usamaru you know to kind of have like fun that that yeah. was the general the fun were the word if they could just have a laugh without other people ruining it you mm. know they got along perfectly fine but it was the rest of the world that just couldn't seem to get yeah. their head around you know a half demon and a demon just yeah it were, the charming's definitely the word for the storyline i mean overall what are you thinking everything about it was great the colors the animation the pace that the story went at the battles were great the characters were really cool the only thing i would have liked to have seen different was and you see it in so many other animes it's just the portrayal of women i mean i love lovely strong women but then do they need to be so overly sexualized? It's all about the timing. They didn't need it though, these characters were great and you just think it would have been nice to see something a bit different. Yeah, I, I, I do know what you're saying with the particular character that you're on about. It's two of them, yeah. Actually, yeah, that is a very good point because uh, one character is, I, I mean, you can't not have her like that because that is her character that's established. So for the movie, I know that you're yeah. on about in general yeah. from the start, but no, that character's there. It has to be mm. what it is. Yeah. Bringing another character into it and it's strangely enough I, I get the feeling that she's meant to be a main character in the manga possibly I, I don't know I've, I've literally just caught up to where the the anime stopped before and I I don't know I got a little bit of an hint maybe that's meant to be a character I should know about shortly mm. so that was interesting there's obviously little problems with anime in general but <laughs> yeah. there's problems in all mediums with the portrayal of women so you know that's something the world needs to take a look at and I don't think it ruined the film though definitely not 
definitely not, no. It's just one thing that, you know, that if they could find somewhere to improve, that could have been a good place to start. I tell you what is absolutely brilliant, as per usual with Blue Exorcist, the soundtrack. I know that we haven't talked about that in depth, mm -hmm. but in the overall section, I think that the soundtrack definitely deserves a nod. Yeah, especially when it came to one of the uh, final battles. Now, <laughs> what did I shout out? Boss battle! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it had that, you know, you it gave you that feeling of, oh, something's gonna happen here, and it, and it really took you on that journey. And without spoiling anything, the uh, climax I noticed wasn't any music, and that had a whole different impact on how the scene was going. And oh, it just fills you with so much dread when there's nothing in the background after hearing something great for the whole of the, the film so far. That suddenly when you don't hear anything, it just fills you with, oh, it worked, it was so effective. I think Takamitsu Inoue said yesterday that when dealing with a film, there's a beginning, a middle and an end. Mm. And they, they got the pacing like brilliant. It, I mean, this has the structure of a Hollywood film. Mm. Even the, when the camera was moving. Exactly. Just little things like I mean pulling focus yeah. on objects in the in the animation I mean they definitely wanted to get this across that this is a film mm -hmm. first and foremost this isn't like an extended episode and over or mm -hmm. anything this is a full-blown film this belonged in the cinema I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna say that I give it a thumbs up because I think it was really good and I think that for anyone who's missing the Blue Exorcist world or maybe were a little bit dubious like myself I mean I said yesterday I, I literally said to the director and producer that I found it fell apart after episode 15 and I do feel a little bit guilty about that because that <laughs> was a little bit brutal if we're honest but I'd like to just say that <laughs> this kind of rights the wrongs to some degree it, it's a very enjoyable film and I think they knew they had to pull a rabbit out of the app I think that they did the job so what is your rating overall it's definitely a thumbs up out of 10 I'd give it an 8 uh, yeah, I, I think that that's fair. I mean, obviously we're dealing with the fact that this is never going to be Summer Wars or anything like that. It's mm -hmm. never going to be judged on anything other than the fact that it's a movie that doesn't follow the manga, which I don't understand at the moment because it's strange this idea that just because something doesn't follow the manga that it's automatically bad because me personally I found something like Soul Eater, it didn't matter that it didn't follow the manga, it was still special in its mm -hmm. own right and that's what this is, it's special in its own right. Both gonna give it a thumbs up, so that's a good result. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. It's a special movie and I think that everyone should check it out. I enjoyed it, you enjoyed it, mm. and if you want to head over to my channel, you can actually see what I was referencing, the interview with Atsushi... Takahashi and Takamitsu Inoue, oh, honestly, got it. got it, in the interviews I was so scared of that happening to me, it was unbelievable. But yeah, if you head over to my channel and check that out, that'd be cool. And thank you for watching, my name's been Jamie Me. you are... <laughs> Archie Date. And we are... Cookies vs Cream. If you could hit that subscribe button, some thumbs up. Thumbs down. Or maybe some comments, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Thank you for watching, bye! Subscribe. <laughs>